Hey, what is going on homeowners? It's Ryan from Roofco. And this week we are gonna talk about how to flash properly, being the keyword there, a brick chimney. So we don't have a real brick chimney here. We got something that looks like brick just for the sake of demo purposes today, but all the same principles are going to apply. So our main thing here when we do a, do a brick chimney flashing is it actually starts before you put the metal, the final piece on the outside. We like to make sure that we've got at least three layers of protection to keep the water out around again, any type of penetration. So so what we've done in this situation is we've taken the shingles back so that way we can expose the decking, the underlayment, the ice and water shield, everything that's supposed to be on the roof is here. But the first thing that we want to do when getting this thing ready to go is actually install that first piece of ice and water shield around the base of it. So that way, if water happens to come down, you've got a piece of, of ice and water shield or in essence a membrane that is going to keep that water out is the first layer of defense. And so what we'll do is we'll take that ice and water shield, we'll lay it right down like this, peel off the backer on it. You want to be a little bit careful with it and only touch the surfaces where you intend to put it. And we'll lay it down. So that is going to be our first step is installing that ice and water shield membrane transitioning from the roof up a good two to three inches onto the surface of where we're going next. We actually do the exact same thing on walls, any place where you've got a roof line that meets something going vertical. So that's our first step is to install the ice and water shield down against the decking up onto the surface of the chimney. All right, so step number two with a, a brick chimney flashing. Hey, we've got our ice and water shield installed right now. We went ahead and installed it on both the top and the bottom all the way around the, the perimeter. That'll stick here in just a second. But our next step is we have to install what's called step flashing as we shingle. So step flashing is just a 90 degree piece of aluminum that is designed to go next to the vertical penetration and then goes onto the roof. So every single shingle that is gonna be meeting a wall is gonna have its own individual piece of step flashing. This is also a corner that a lot of contractors cut because when they're replacing a roof, they'll just simply reuse the old flashing. Well. What do you think a piece of metal that's had a couple nails driven through it could possibly do? It could create some challenges, right? So we want to make sure that every time we do something, we're putting all new components back into place. So when we install step flashing, and we'll get a close up view of this here in just a minute, it's very important that we don't just run it even with the shingle, okay? But we do have to make sure that we install this metal at least a good one inch past the corner of this chimney. So that way, again, when water's sitting up there, water's running down, it's gonna have a good, you know, inch or so to get away from the chimney before it goes down into the gutter elsewhere. So let's go ahead and install this. And each piece of flashing really only requires one nail placed in the appropriate spot, usually in the top corner, top opposite corner. There we go. First piece of step flashing is installed. Now we just install our first shingle on top of that. And we cheated a little bit here and we went ahead and cut all the shingles already just to save time for this demo here. But now we'll go ahead and just nail this shingle just like we normally would. So we'll put two nails in this smaller shingle here. There we go. All right, so, so the first one's in. Let's grab our second shingle. Okay, and we're gonna put our next shingle down. Next piece of step flashing goes down and this is gonna go down to right at the nail line for our next shingle. So we've got to nail this down before we get to the shingle. Got a little ahead of myself there. There we go. Okay, so the step flashing is now overlapping the next piece right here. So we'll put our next shingle on. And one of the reasons why we like to have this ice and water shield, again, when we're driving a nail through that ice and water shield is gonna create a seal around any nail that's going through the roof decking at this point. So just another layer of protection to make sure you're not gonna have a problem doing this yourself. There we go. All right, so now we're cooking with gas, moving forward quickly here. Put our next piece of step flashing on. All right, and so for our final piece here, we went ahead and cut this piece so that way it lines up evenly with the edge of our chimney. All right, now that we've got the step flashing on, we are ready to put our counter flashing on. Now this is where this job gets a little bit more complex because we always like to custom make our counter flashing, which is, you know, this is literally a roll of aluminum that you use 
use a brake on in order to put the appropriate bends to keep the water out. So what we're going to show you here in just a quick second is how this works, but before we actually attach it, I want to show you on the flashing itself why this is so important and what we do different than most contractors here. So I'm going to bring this a little bit closer here, but you can see on this edge, this actually tucks into the brick. That's why, as you just saw in the video, we were actually grinding out the mortar joints so that way we can tuck this 3 8 of an inch lip into the mortar joints and we'll put a final bead of sealant on that. But that way we're not relying on caulking to keep the water out. We're using a mechanical seal with all of our flashing. And this is where this gets really, really cool. So instead of on the corners right here, a lot of times you'll see a contractor just literally wrap the metal around and put a nail through it and call it a day. Or worse yet, they'll just end this metal here run a piece of metal here and then put a bead of caulk there. Well, that's certainly going to fail over a period of time. So we'd like to find a more permanent solution when combining our metal here. So what we do is we actually put a one inch lip here on the bottom piece. Then we actually, on the next piece that connects to it, we create an interlocking seam. So they actually just slide together just like this. And then we crimp it. And now we've got a mechanical seal for all of our corners and we're not having to rely on caulking to keep the water out. All right, so now that we've got our custom piece of metal made here, we're going to go ahead and actually install it and take this top lip again and we're going to install it into the mortar joint that we just ground out. One other super important piece that I like to point out on here is notice how we've got this little lip right here. We didn't just have metal left over, that actually serves a purpose. That's going to go underneath our piece of step flashing here. So that way, in the event water is coming down here, it, it, it's going to hit the metal versus having an opportunity to go elsewhere. So we're going to slide that over. We're going to tuck this into the mortar joint here. And now we've got our bottom pan in place. And the only final piece we need to do there is we take a small masonry nail here instead of a roofing nail. We're going to grab a masonry nail and we're going to go ahead and just nail this in. You don't have to use a bunch, but a masonry nail is a little bit stronger and we're just going to drive it in right above the flashing here. Drive our first nail in and just one last nail here. There we go. All right, so we've got two nails holding this in. Our final piece that we'll do here once we've got the entire chimney flashed is then we'll actually put a bead of Volcom in here. Volcom is a very high durable caulk. It actually comes with a good warranty on it and it's not going to dry rot out like other caulking will. So we'll finish this off with some Volcom caulk right at the very end. But now let's go ahead and finish out flashing the rest of our chimney. All right, so we are wrapping up our chimney project. As you can see, we've got all of our mortar joints ground in here. So each piece of step flashing is going up two courses of brick. We've got masonry nails driven in to hold it in place. So again, everything is 100% a mechanical seal here. And then next, we're going to put our top pan on. So again, as you can see, this is a rather intricately bent piece of aluminum. It needs to adhere to the pitch of the roof needs to be the width of the chimney. So there's a lot that goes into this. And again, it's not something that's difficult to do. It just takes a little bit of time and a lot of patience in order to put this together the right way. But again, this is definitely the right way to flash a chimney. As you can see right here as well, we've got another one inch little, what I like to call a wing sticking out up here because we're going to create the same type of mechanical seal as we did down below up top. So that way, again, at every corner, you're not going to have to worry about a bead of caulk running bad, a nail coming out. You've got a mechanical seal that's crimped together. And then we'll finish this off with, again, some nice Volcom sealant along all of the edges. But that's really just a precautionary piece because, you know, we've ground all of this into mortar joints. Everything is going to have a nice, solid mechanical seal to it. So let's go ahead and get started putting this final piece of the puzzle together with our top pan. All right, so we are here for the final step of how to finish counter flashing on our brick slash, this is actually wood, but uh, stamped like brick chimney here. So we've got everything finished up. We've got every joint ground into the mortar joints. We've got all of our masonry nails driven in. And now we are ready to finish the final step or second to, to, to last step, I should say, which is actually crimping those two seals that we talked about. So and that's just taking a crimping tool. You can get this at any local hardware store. And all we have to do is just crimp these final edges. Makes this incredibly tight. And there we go. Now we're good to go. So now we can put our crimping tool away and go ahead and move forward with the final step of applying our Volcom sealant. And again, I'm very specific about this because with this type of a sealant, turn that over upside down that way. <laughs> anyway, with this type of a sealant, the reason why we like to use Volcom versus just a regular roofing tar, well, roofing tar is very susceptible to just simply drying out and cracking. It's not a very flexible material, whereas the Volcom, it's ideal for very porous surfaces. Porous surfaces, ideally like brick, etc. It's perfect for that because it's going to remain flexible. It comes with a great warranty on it. As long as it's installed properly, this is the only way to go, in our opinion, when it comes to sealing any of your final flashing. So once we get that done, we'll show you the final picture of our final counter flash chimney and we'll be good to go. Hopefully this was helpful.
All right, so now that we've got all of our Volcom installed, all of our joints are appropriately sealed, we are 100% wrapped up, good to go with this chimney flashing, aka wood brick chimney flashing in this, in this case here. But we hope that was helpful. If, if there's any questions that you have about any of the steps involved in this process, definitely drop us a comment below. We'd love to hear from you, answer any questions. Or if you don't want to do this yourself, give us a call. We'll be happy to help you out as well. So for Roofco, I'm Ryan Hergett. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. We'd love to hear from you. Any questions you have, that's what we're here for. Thanks so much.